From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm delighted to welcome Vanessa Weiss, director of the Johnson Space Center, home to our astronauts and mission control for all of our human space flight. Director Weiss, good to see you again. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I, let me ask you, it's been a while since I've talked to you. What kind of adjustment has it been going from number two to number one? Well, uh, thank you, Cambrell, so much for having me uh, on your show. Uh, it has been a, a really interesting journey. Um, this summer, I did take over the helm of the center uh, in July. And since that time, uh, we've been very busy uh, in human spaceflight and getting ready for our upcoming uh, Artemis mission. Uh, so I've just been head down, uh, busy uh, trying to focus on the job. And uh, so the transition has not been a difficult one. Uh, but it has just required me just really focusing on, on getting ready for what I'm going to hopefully get to share with you all the many things that are coming up over the spring and into the summer. Oh, that's great. You know, I didn't know this when I first started asking to get on your schedule, but here we are in National Women's History Month, and that's great because you're in the process of continuing to put history in place as far as women are concerned. But most recently, a big milestone for NASA, a lot of attention this week as a rollout of this huge Artemis. Artemis 1 rocket is eventually is going to take astronauts uh, back to the moon. We talk about what a big step this is and the main stages of Artemis, the, the program that hopefully we'll get us back to the moon. Yeah, so super excited. As you uh, are showing uh, the footage of uh, the Artemis One, uh, that is the rollout that happened on yesterday, well, Thursday, uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, so right now it's uh, on its way and at the, the launch pad. What's gonna happen is on this particular mission, this is an uncrewed test flight. Mm. And this will be a test of all the systems in order for us to uh, go to the vicinity of the moon and um, make all of the um, uh, operational uh, exercises that you will of mm. the system uh, to be able then to test the performance of, for us, the Orion spacecraft and um, the return of that capsule uh, to through the atmosphere of what it will experience and make sure that we have the proper heat shields, everything that we will then be able to next on Artemis II fly our astronauts. So what's happening right now is uh, we're doing uh, this rollout to the, to the launch pad uh, in a few weeks, we'll do what we call a wet dress rehearsal. So we will test being able to load the fluids and everything that it takes to actually launch it, uh, do a countdown. Uh, we'll even practice if we have a weather delay or if we have to scrub or anything uh, so that our technicians can be ready for when we actually do the mission. So we rolled it out, we'll do this wet dress rehearsal, and then the next step will be to launch it. And that is gonna happen uh, sometime early summer. So, so, so the people don't get confused. Artemis is the name of the overall project, correct? And then the Orion is a spacecraft that's sitting on top that's gonna be the home for the astronauts. So talk about what makes Orion, and I know that there is a big difference between Orion and other vehicles used during uh, previous, like Apollo and other kind of, it's a whole different ball game is it with Orion? Yes, yeah, so Orion uh, is, is a, a larger uh, spacecraft, and so we'll be able to carry uh, our a larger crew than we did with Apollo to the moon. And one of the things that we'll be able to do with Orion is we'll be having um, eventually, you know, when we go to do our landing missions, uh, first we're going to do a test landing mission where Orion is going to rendezvous with what we call a human landing system and the crew will transfer over to the lander and then they will go down. But we'll have two crew that will stay on Orion and then two that will go to the surface. Whereas previously on Apollo, we left one person and then two went to the surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that expands the uh, capabilities that we have. We're also responsible here at the Johnson Space Center for um, another segment of this overall Artemis campaign called the Gateway. And the Gateway will be a small platform that will be near the surface, I mean, sorry, in lunar uh, orbit. And so uh, the Gateway 
pay will allow us to be able to send crew members on what we'll call 30-day stays hmm. on the gateway and then also have crew then have the ability to go to the surface and come back to the gateway. And so the Orion being a larger spacecraft allows us to take more people that will be able to go uh, to the surface of the moon. Oh. And one thing about Artemis that you know, I like to highlight is that Artemis, the, the reason we gave it that name she was the twin sister in Greek mythology to Apollo. And so with our astronaut corps being diverse, we're now going to have women and men and, and people of color now going to the surface of the moon. And so that is really what we're excited about, Cambrell, and is that now when we go this time, we will go with our international partners. When we went before uh, as a country, we were just Americans. And so only Americans have walked on the surface of the moon. But now we're gonna take the whole world with us. We're gonna have international partners and along with our astronauts and then uh, Eventually, uh, there are going to be commercial activities that go on on the surface of the moon as well. You mentioned it about the diverse makeup of the astronauts and the likelihood now that someone uh, of color is uh, women will likely be on the moon if everything goes like it's supposed to go. What does it mean for, to see that starting to happen with you at the helm, which you represent another milestone for NASA and spaceflight? Oh, yeah. So, you know, Kimbrell, I have been fortunate to be uh, in the NASA community for over 30 years and uh, have seen us transition from uh, shuttle to now the International Space Station to moving forward with, with Artemis as well. And um, seeing the changes that we've had in terms of uh, diversity, uh, not only uh, in our astronaut corps, but within our engineering community, within our science community, our business community that supports and makes all of this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, now seeing that everyone has a role and everyone uh, can move into a leadership of these uh, programs as well. I want a full disclosure. I've known the director before she's been in this position, known her for a while now. And I want to take you back, Vanessa, to a time when we spoke a few years ago when I came to NASA to speak to you about this little girl from South Carolina and what, how it got you. Let's talk. I want you to take a listen to this uh, about you uh, being in leadership at NASA and how you came to that position. Roll it. As a little girl, I was very interested in how plants grew, animals. I could just sit outside and amuse myself. And um, I think it was just from there, just, just the curiosity. And so coming here to NASA, where we're really looking at, you know, what is the origins of the universe? Mm -hmm. You know, this is like big, big playground for me. I get to come here every day and just have a wonderful time. So are you still having that wonderful time? <laughs> I am absolutely having that wonderful time. Uh, and now, um, you know, as, as you said, being the le leader of this organization and being responsible for uh, the astronauts, uh, mission control, all of these programs, um, it's a big responsibility, but I have a wonderful team and uh, we all come to work every day passionate about what we do. Well, and uh, yes, I'm having a great time. That's good to hear. We should all be so happy and passionate in our jobs. We're just